Today I'm going to be changing the air filter and the spark plugs on my Kawasaki ER6F. It's a 2008 model, so if you have an ER6F Ninja 650R or the ER6N, it should be pretty much the same. So this here is the filter I'm going to be putting on, that's the DNA filter. I'll show that more when it's time to actually install it. And these are the spark plugs I'm going to install. So first of all, we need to remove the seat. The lock is on the left hand side, looking towards the front of the bike. You just got to pop the key in, turn it slightly, it only turns a little bit. Then lift the seat up from the rear, pull it back and away from the bike and it's off. The next thing we need to do is take these two bolts off. They hold the seat catch on, what the seat goes into and holds into. And it also holds the tank in place and on basically because it's just got two rubber mounts that the front is designed to just cup into now they're off the tank is pretty much ready to come off but I've just got to take the side panels off first there's one screw right there you just need to take that off once that is done all you have to do is pull towards you away from the bike and it will come straight off just be careful because there is a rubber grommet at the front right on the tip which just cups onto the bottom of the tank just to prevent rattling or any damage to the tank. They come off very easy. There's just a few plastic nubs that go into some rubber grommets and they come off very easy and go on very easy, but they do hold nice and sturdy. Then we need to take the fuel pump electrical connector off. Well, pull it apart from itself. At first you may feel it's gonna be a bit difficult it looks like there's like two tabs on the side and one on the front that you might have to press down all at once and then pull out but right on the front as i'm holding it at the start of this it's at the top you just actually lift it up and you don't need to hold it and it'll just be able to pull apart nice and easily next you need to prop the tank off with the bits of wood or a piece of wood or something like that whatever you can get to hold it up and the next thing is as far as I'm aware, just a breather pipe, a pressure release pipe. It has a little pinch clamp on the top, which you may be able to do with your fingers. If not, use a pair of pin nose pliers or something. But I managed to get it off easily with my hands and I didn't even need to pinch this clamp. It came off relatively easy still. And we need to go around to the other side of the tank and take the actual fuel pump line off it's fairly easy to do first off though you need to pull that tab back the red part you can see i've already actually done that because i've done it while the camera is around the other side so you couldn't really see it so i've cut that out all you need to do is get yourself a flat head screwdriver a fairly large one would make it a little bit easier and just gently put that into the closest part to you you'll see it as i'm seeing it now or as you're seeing it now and you just need to put the screwdriver in there just twist it to pull it out and then just use your fingers to make sure it's fully out then after that put a bit of tissue down underneath where the pipe is hold a bit of tissue in your hands while you're doing it as well you will get a little bit of spillage of fuel when you pull it off but it's only going to be a small amount a few drips nothing more you don't really notice much can make just be careful when you do pull it off because it's quite tight on there and it might suddenly come off now it's time to take the tank off everything's disconnected so me didn't think through this enough so I got in front of the camera but all you need to do is grab the front grab the back lift the back up pull it away from the front of the bike and pull it away just make sure you prop it up on something so the fuel pump is not leaning on anything so it doesn't damage it in any way Now you just need to undo these screws on the top of this cover plate so you can get to the bolts underneath it.
once you've got this off you just need to undo the four bolts inside and you'll be able to take the air box off don't forget to put a bit of tissue in each throttle body or a bit of rag or something something clean you want to avoid dropping any bolts that hold the air box on falling in then when you take them out I would suggest getting a long allen key if you can because, but I didn't have any long enough or some that go on a ratchet with an extension that would just make your life a little bit easier but I didn't have either so I had to use what I had the longest allen keys I had they'll be somewhere around five to six mil And once they're off you can take the air box off just lift it up from the back there'll be a pipe that I'll show you in a bit that sits on the back of the engine there's also another pipe coming off it but on my bike it's blocked off I don't know what it's for and just lift it up from the back and pull it away from the front of the bike and the air box is off There's the pipe that sits on the top of the engine and this is the other pipe that is blocked off as I show here. Now here's the coil packs. There's a one and a two on the top of the engine with arrows. You have to make sure that they reach pointing in the same direction and that the wires go back on the same ones when you, when you put them back together and make sure the cores are facing arrows. What I was pointing out in the wire was there uh, some red li little bits in there. You just gotta be careful they don't fall out. If they do, just make sure you put them back. They're just some sort of like ceiling ring inside the thing to prevent moisture getting in probably. And this is the tool I'm using. Uh, this is actually a, the tool from the bike's own tool set that comes with it which is perfect for getting the spark plugs off because it's the perfect size of course because it's for this actual bike it's got a 14 mil socket head on the top or well it's easier to use a spanner for that and i did actually manage to get them off or one of them off just with my hand the other one i just needed to use a spanner to loosen it off and then just unscrewing it with the hand when it comes out and all you need to do of course is put the new ones in I decided not to gap them because I just p compared them to the ones that were in there and the gaps looked exactly the same and it was always running absolutely perfectly fine beforehand so I thought well should be fine plus these are iridium plugs I didn't want to muck about with them too much because they can be pretty delicate and easily damaged. There's the state of the old ones, probably in there since new, but they're actually the exact same plugs, which are these ones, the NGK Iridium plugs. Here's the part number for this bike. There's the com comparison from old to new. You can see they, the gaps are exactly the same as well, so I decided not to change it. Plus, you should really, for Iridium plugs, use a special ring type feeler gauge sort of thing with um, special gapping tools on them to gap them. But as I say, it's running fine beforehand, no problems. The gaps look exactly the same, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. And they were actually fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the bike now, it's all damp and running. Just make sure when you put them in, push the spark plugs into the tool, into the rubber bit so they get a hold of it. Make sure they don't fall out, just get them in there gently. And then just gently just wind it back just to make sure it sits into the threads and then start winding on gently. Just be careful, make sure it doesn't catch or anything. If you've a bit while just catching. Just unwind them again and try again, try and straighten it up. Wind it back till it sits on the threads and wind it in again. Mm -hmm. 
then you've got to put the coil packs in when you put them in remember you've got to make sure they face the arrows on the one and two cylinders that, that are on the top of the cylinder head push them down as hard as you can they should click into place but if they don't just make sure you push them as hard as you can so they're seated as best they can because i think one of mine clicked and one didn't but as long as you push them down as hard as you can you should they should be seated in as far as they can go you then have to make sure that the one and two wires go on right so you might want to jot down to remind yourself to label them one and two if you're not trusting that they're going to sit in place and get mixed up but i just sat them where, as they were and they they didn't go anywhere then you could put the air box back on just get it in you have to fiddle about a bit to get it under the wiring harness on each side and at the front and then once it's in you just gotta get the pipe in past the frame at the back and just push that down and route the other wire which is blocked off somewhere the other tube i should be saying not wire but um yeah just get that back down you will have to maybe come around the other side as you'll see me do just to look in at, at the back of the fire and so you can see where the pipe is going make sure it sits on to the engine in the right place Some people have a bit of a problem making it sit on to the part it goes into or onto I should say but I had no problem with that. There is a clip on there that you can get some pliers onto to open up and push the box down and make sure it's on there. push down on the back just to make sure it goes on that's how I do it <laughs> and all you've got to do is bolt it back onto the bike Then put the cover back on, making sure you put the pipe back on in the right place. And then you can put the tank back on. Now we can put the tank back on. There's um, rubber grommets you can see just before I put it back on where the tank mounts, they just slide into that. Once you've got the tank off, you'll be able to see where there's the grooves that go around the rubber grommets or mounts at the front and that just sits on there. And you just 
make sure it sits on those and then you can put the back of the tank down and we just want a proper up again with the wood because you need to reconnect the bits and pieces underneath first of all I connected the fuel pump power cable I did need to lower it slightly just to make sure I could connect it properly and then put it back in its place then you need to reconnect the little pipe which is either a pressure release pipe or an overflow pipe I'm not sure which one that really is all you need to do is either press the little crimp in with your fingers or with some pliers or just push it back on for some reason I had no problem pushing it back on without pressing the clip down so you probably won't need to do that just work it on just make sure it goes fully on and it should be fine and then we're around the other side again to reconnect the fuel pump hose when you're putting this on hold the tank on the other side as I am as well just to make sure you're not pushing the tank off because obviously it's still not fully connected push it on quite hard you are supposed to from what I've heard you are supposed to hear a click as it goes on I pushed it quite hard but I heard no click so I just made sure I pushed it on and just tried again a couple of times putting a fair bit of pressure on it it's a hard bit of plastic so you shouldn't really be able to break it just make sure you hold it right so you're not pushing down on it or anything just pushing it straight towards the pipe that's going on and after doing that for a little bit I thought well it must be on now I've not heard the click but it must be on so I tried to put the red clamp back in pressed it and that just clicked back into place so that was all good I was happy with that so I moved on to the next stage where you have to where it's best before you put it all together start it up and just let it run for a few seconds or so rev it a few times just keep checking around around the fuel pump line to make sure there are no leaks coming out you'll notice straight, almost straight away I would think if there's any fuel leaking through it and luckily it's all fine And all you need to do is put the tank down put the seat clamp back on and put the bolts back in do them up nice and snug I'll put the torque setting on screen I didn't torque them up because I don't want to use my torque wrench at the moment because I'm not really trusting it at the moment because it's quite old it was rarely used so it's just sat around mostly and um, it might be fine but I accidentally one time backed off the adjuster on the end so I didn't know whether that would take it out of calibration or not it would be best to get a new one I think but these won't be that tight so I just snugged them up just gave them another little turn just to make sure they're nice and tight but not too tight Then we go on to the side panels. Just make sure the rubber grommet at the end goes on the little lip under the side of the tank. You'll feel where that is. You'll know where that is already by this point in the job. And then all you've got to do is push the little plastic nubs into the rubber grommets on the bike. And then you just do the screw up and that's on. And then you just do the same again on the other side and I'll speed that up because there's no need to see that twice fully <laughs> because you'll know how to do that by now you've seen it on the other side as I say and once you've taken them off you'll know how to put them on easy enough when you do this job and then after that all you have to do is put the seat back on and that's the job done so I hope you enjoyed it I hope it's helpful if you liked it give me a thumbs up that'd be really helpful got any questions put them down below in the comment section and hopefully I'll see you in the next video which should be the chain and sprockets and I've also got the scorpion exhaust video to come as well and then we'll be taking it out for a ride after those jobs are done I've already got a video up of me riding it after this job just a quick little test while I was popping out after doing it but anyway that's the end of this video thanks for watching again I'll see you again soon